In this video, we'll be learning how to do three things with the TI Inspire CX. So, we'll be seeing how to plot a scatter graph or a scatter plot, as well as find the line of best fit, in other words, linear regression, and finally, we'll see how to draw that line of best fit on the scatter graph that we made or scatter plot. So, to do that, the first thing here that I'll point out is I've made out made up some data here, re relatively simple data, in which we're looking at how two quantities, a quantity x and a quantity y, vary with respect to one another. So the quantity x we can see here takes on the values 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and the quantity y takes on the values 2.2, 3.7, 6.4, 7.9, and 10.8. So I'll leave these two things, both our aims and objectives, as well as the data we'll use, on the right-hand side here, so you can refer to them. Now let's get started with the TI. So the first thing we're going to do on our home page here to get started is we're going to create a new document. So we select New Document and go for it. Now because we're dealing with data and lines of the best fit, we're going to add lists and spreadsheet. That's the fourth option here. So we go ahead and select that. We're then presented with a spreadsheet, nothing more. And the idea to begin with is going to be to enter all of our data into this spreadsheet. And we're going to enter it exactly as we see it here. And to begin with, we'll name this first column quantity x. And we'll do this without using a space, uh, simply because at times the TI doesn't, doesn't like spaces. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and type quantity x. In the same way, at the very top of column B, I'll name it quantity y. This gray row I'm leaving completely blank, and now I can go ahead and actually enter the values of the data. So we saw that quantity x took on the values 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and the quantity y took on the values 2.2, 3.7, 6.4, 7.9, and 10.8. There, that's all our data in our calculator now, stored there. And so the first thing we said we'd do would be to plot a scatter graph. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to add a page to our document. And to add a page, we have to press on the control button followed by the doc button, and you can see above it written in blue is the plus page, in other words, add page to document option. So we go ahead and press doc. We want to add a scatter plot here, so we're going to go ahead and select add graphs. But because we don't have an actual function of x to enter, we have to select menu on our calculator and specify the graph type on, that's option 3 there. Looking at our options, we can see that the fourth option is a scatter plot. So we go ahead and enter that. It's now asking us um, which, va which values go on the horizontal x-axis as well as which values go on the vertical y-axis. So to enter the values, we're going to use this var button here. Var stands for variables. And by selecting var, we'll see that we have two options here, quantity x or quantity y. And those are the two names that we gave our columns in our spreadsheet. In other words, within this document, the calculator memorizes the variables that we've stored. So for the x-axis, we select quantity x. In the same way, for quantity y, we're going to press var again. And this in this case, we'll select quantity y and press enter. We're done here, so we can press enter. And we can see that it's plotting these points. But we can also see here that we're not seeing all the points, and that's because the, the grid isn't centered properly, or we're not seeing the right part of it. So to make sure we can see all our data points, we can select Menu. And then on the fourth option, we can see Window slash Zoom. So we're going to go there. And here we can see lots of options. Now, you should really get, in the, the, get used to sort of fiddling around with this and figuring out which one is best for you. But when it comes to data, 
it's often useful just to select the ninth option here, which is the zoom on data. So if I select that, it automatically zooms around all the data points that we have. And now we can clearly see the quantity x against the quantity y that we entered. So that's it. That's how we plot a scatter graph. Now the next thing we want to do, though, is to find the line of best fit of these two quantities, x and y. And so to do that, we're going to go back to the first page of our document, which I select in the top left-hand corner here, 1.1. And that's our spreadsheet. And so what I'm doing here is I'm placing myself in the cell right next to the 2.2. So in other words, the first, I want to say, blank row here in the next column. And to add a linear regression, we're going to select Menu, and then select Statistics. And again, we have several options here, but we're going to choose Stat Calculations. And we can see we have many options here, but the one we're interested in is the linear regression MX plus B, which is the third option here. So we go ahead and select that. It then asks us for the X list. Now what it's asking here is which of the two variables, which of the two columns, if you wish, is on the horizontal axis. And that's our quantity X. If I select this here, I can see that I have my choice quantity X. Similarly, I choose my Y list, which I'll choose as quantity Y. And the next line we see here is save regression equation to F1. And as we'll see in a few minutes, that corresponds to the function of the line of best fit. The rest of the entries we can actually leave by default. The category, sorry, the calculator does a pretty good job at this. And so we can just press OK. And there we go, the calculator has just calculated everything we needed. Remember, a line of best fit is a line with an equation y equals to mx plus b, where m is the gradient of the line. And we can see this right here. It's just figured out that the gradient would be 2.14. Right below that, we can see the y-intercept b, and it's worked it out as negative 0.22. We then have the R value, a couple of rows down, and the R value in this case is 0 0.994113. Now remember, the R value, known as Pearson's coefficient, tells us how strong, strongly correlated the two quantities X and Y are. And if R is equal to 1, then that's a perfect correlation, a very, very strong correlation. So in this case, at 0 0.99, we, have, we can definitely say that the quantity X and Y are strongly correlated. But so that's how you would do it. We found that y can be expressed in terms of x by writing y is equal to 2.14x minus 0 0.22. And that's how we found our linear regression. Now the next thing we said we want to do was to draw the line of best fit on the scatter graph. So if I go back to the graph here, that was on the second page, I've just selected at the top right hand, top left hand corner, sorry. If I select menu, we can add another function here. So if I just select menu, graph type, and function, you can see that by default it's telling us function 2 of x, that's f2 of x. And the reason why it goes straight to 2 is because we've actually already stored a function 1. And that function 1 is the linear regression that we've just calculated. So if you just press up on your calculator, on that sort of pad we have there, press upwards once, and now we can see the function that we just stored and calculated. And it's right there. f1 of x equals to 2.14x minus 0 0.22. Now if you press enter, our line of best fit is right there. And we can see that's a very good fit. In fact, Let's try zooming out a bit just to see how good a fit that is. So remember, I pressed on Menu. I'm selecting the fourth option, Window slash Zoom. And I'm just going to zoom out. And I'll zoom out again. There we go. And there we have it. We can definitely see now that this line of best fit is a very good fit for five bits of data. And that's how 
you would draw the line of best fit on a scatter graph. So we've seen quite a few things here. One, how to plot a scatter graph. Two, how to find the line of best fit, or the linear regression. And three, we saw how to draw that linear regression on the scatter plot that we plotted to begin with. That's quite a lot of information. It would be worthwhile watching this video a couple of times again and practicing as you go along. I hope that helps.